Hi, my name is Ali Jazieri. I'm a fellow at the University of Kansas, and I'm here today with uh, Dr. Robert Califf, uh, who's a professor of medicine at the Duke Clinical Research Institute uh, on behalf of the Fits on the Go blog. Uh, Dr. Califf, thanks for joining us. You bet. It's great to be here with you. Do you think that there are specific things that you would advise fellows in training uh, who are interested in this topic uh, uh, as far as uh, how to get involved uh, in, in trying to uh, promote health equity either locally or uh, at the national level with ACC? Well, uh, let me say something I would have not said had I not just spent two years at the FDA, including a year as uh, commissioner and dealing with politics firsthand. Um, it's easy to be cynical about politics, and there's plenty of reason to feel that way. But the fact is that highly energized people can have a huge impact if you really get strategic about it and get to know people who are making these kinds of decisions. So I would advise people interested in health equity to be very politically active. It's worth it to do it, and it can have an impact. And I'd say within the ACC, you know, I love cardiology. It's been my whole career. I owe a lot to it. But there are really sort of two sort of streams in cardiology. One is technical excellence, um, which can be uh, applied to anyone who comes in the door. But the other is how do you deal with the strategies and policies that um, give people opportunity to benefit from technical excellence. And here's where I think people interested could have a big impact if they um, get organized within groups like the ACC and the American Heart Association uh, to lead to the best policies. Re recognizing that we don't know everything, so there's a lot of research to be done too. What, what are the best strategies that actually work in a very complicated world? I, I, let me just give you one uh, Absolutely. one issue that I was thinking about a lot uh, three or four years ago when I was asked to address the uh, uh, the National uh, Anesthesiologist Group. And we were doing a lot of work at the time on geospatial mapping household by household in North Carolina where it's quite remarkable that you can see very big differences in outcome just depending on what neighborhood a person lives in. Um, and the question that the anesthesiologists were seemed to be quite concerned about was the sort of invasion of uh, percutaneous techniques and the lesser need for the whole operating room apparatus, et cetera. And um, I began to think, you know, here we have electronic health records for everybody. We also know where they live. We can produce very good maps of where they are and what their uh, records are that could be embedded within the maps. And if you ask the question, let's just take percutaneous valve replacement. Do you think that um, an 85-year-old banker with aortic stenosis is more likely to get uh, surveilled to see if that person needs a percutaneous valve replacement than a nursing home resident on Medicaid um, in a nursing home? I would argue that's pretty obvious. Do they both have electronic records now? If they had an echo, is it in the records? Almost every American has had an echo by the time you're 60 years old now. So it's entirely within our capability to use very rational methods to ensure that whether you're the banker or the Medicaid recipient, if you have aortic stenosis and you can't walk across the room and you've got an echo, that you could get um, access to this great technology that we have access to. So that's just one uh, very simple example. And then I have to put in a plug. Uh, you know, the biggest effect is going to be cigarettes. 450,000 Americans this year will die from tobacco-related disease. Very um, highly enriched with people from uh, poor neighborhoods and poorly educated. Enormous, very directed advertising by tobacco companies towards vulnerable people. Um, and we've got to make sure that we have policies that help them uh, not smoke because it's just the kiss of death. That's what it is. And then hypertension would be number two. Um, we know now we need to get blood pressures lower, totally within our ability to do it. Cardiologists shouldn't really be the main people doing it, but we should be affecting our ecosystem, our primary care systems and our nurse practitioners who really, frankly, mostly could do a better job at sort of sticking with it to help people uh, treat their hypertension. And now we've got these amazing results with PCSK9. 
where the main message to me is not just about PCSK9, it's that I think we know now that whether it's statins or perhaps it's Etamive or PCSK9 or some combination, people are going to have fewer events if they have lower LDL cholesterol. And uh, it's a beautiful story, but now we've got to implement it and make sure that people on Medicaid have the same opportunity as people on Wall Street. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Califf.